Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX and Ofcom have announced a proposal and consultation period on changes that they want to make to amateur radio licensing here in the UK. In this video, I'm going to go through the proposal as quickly as possible, giving you the details that you really need to know. updating the licensing framework, and there's three parts to this. Firstly, Ofcom don't intend to introduce any new level of license. There was some speculation that Ofcom were thinking about putting in a license below foundation. Ofcom aren't going to do that. Foundation is still going to be the entry point for amateur radio licenses here in the UK. Anyone should be allowed to operate amateur radio equipment under the supervision of a license holder. Currently, a non-licensed person can only pass a greetings message under the supervision of a licensed radio amateur. Under the proposal, Ofcom are saying that that person should be able to operate the amateur radio station as if they were licensed, but ultimately the buck stops with the license holder who is supervising. And every individual would only be able to hold one personal license under the current conditions. If you progress up through the tiers of license, you can retain your previous call signs. For instance, I still hold my foundation and intermediate call signs, but under the proposal, those would get revoked and I would only keep my full license M0JSX. Call signs. There's a number of bits to this, so bear with me. Ofcom wants to allow the reissuing of previously issued call signs and make it easier to get those call signs through their online portal. Basically, old licenses, older call signs are going to be able to be reissued to new hams. Allow licensees to change their call signs. There's a caveat here that you're only going to be able to do this once every two years, but you could, if you wanted to, change your call signs with no particular reason in mind other than the fact that you want to change your call sign. Suffixes. Currently, the license document alludes to some suffixes which are allowed and some that aren't. Ofcom wants to just open up the lid and say that you're allowed to use any suffix at all, i.e. if you wanted to sign stroke Yota, stroke Jota, stroke Pota, stroke Sota, or stroke anything you want, Ofcom wants to be able to allow you to do that. Well, here's a big one, intermediate call signs. Basically, Ofcom wants to do away with all call signs that start with a two, which is an intermediate license. They want to introduce an M8 and an M9 series of call signs and encourage current intermediate license holders to change their call signs and there will be an appropriate call sign reserved for them. So if you currently have 2E0ABC, then M8ABC will be reserved for you. If you currently hold 2E1XYZ, then M9XYZ will be reserved for you. And going forward, when you pass your intermediate license, you'll only be allowed to select either an M8 or an M9 call sign. Another big one, regional secondary locators becoming optional and no longer requiring an NOV for special RSLs. So if you're currently in any of the regions other than England, except if your call sign starts with a 2, you need to put in a regional secondary locator. W for Wales, M for Scotland, and so on. Ofcom doesn't see a regulatory need to do this. Therefore, they're going to make regional secondary locators optional, but they will be from the defined list. So you can, can still continue running as Mike Mike Zero XYZ or GW4ABC, but there won't be a legal requirement to do so. And when Ofcom announce a special regional secondary locator, they want to do away with the need to get an NOV, you'll just be able to use it. So for instance, until the end of June, we're currently able to use R or Romeo as a regional secondary locator to celebrate the King's coronation. Ofcom is saying in the future, whenever they do this, you won't have to get an NOV to do that. Technical parameters new power output levels. Ofcom are proposing that foundation license holders be able to use 20 watts, intermediate license holders get 100 watts, and full license holders get one kilowatt on the bands where amateur radio is the primary user. Foundation and intermediate license holders are going to be able to use the internet for remote control of their own stations. NOV free deployment of repeaters, gateways and beacons so long as the output power of that repeater beacon or gateway is less than five watts. Otherwise, same rules apply, you're gonna to have to apply for an NOV via the RSGB ETCC. Foundation license holders are going to be able to build their own equipment 
as well as have access to the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands and allow aeronautical mobile operation on some bands, namely those where amateur radio is the primary service. Clearer updated rules. Just a few bits here that we don't really need to go into too much. Align license T's and C's with other Ofcom licenses. Remove unnecessary complexity and remove provisions not required for spectrum management. Responses are due by 5 p.m. on the 4th of September, after which Ofcom will release a statement with their changes. The RSGB are expected to publish their guidance on how to reply to the consultation. You can find out that when it gets published at rsgb.org slash license review. Thanks very much for watching. I want to know what your thoughts are on the proposal. Are there good bits? Are there bad bits? What do you think? Answers in the comment section down below, please. If you've liked this video, there's a button for that. There's another button that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button. It really does help me out. Uh, there's another video just coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you might like next. Until next time, 73. Bye-bye.